Window rules are a really awesome feature of Awesome WM. Basically, what they let you do is spawn a window every single time with the exact same properties. So, for example, let's say you want to open up XEV and every time have it be a floating window. Or maybe you want to have it so every time you open up something like Discord, it always appears on tag 9, regardless of which tag you're currently on. Or maybe you want to have it so every time you open up, say, MPV, it opens up in a full screen window. This and so much more can be done with window rules. Now, I'm well aware that window rules are not exclusively an awesome WM feature. The window manager this is based on, DWM, also has this functionality as well, and plenty of other window managers do as well, but I'm not using any of those. I use Awesome, so we're going to be talking about it with Awesome WM. Okay, so to define a window rule, we're going to have to go over to our Awesome configuration. So this is likely going to be located in your doc config folder, in your Awesome folder, and then in a file known as rc.lua. Now, if you're using the default configuration, the block where you can define Awesome rules will already be defined. So if you go down to a section that is labeled awful.rules.rules, this is the block that you're going to be using. If you're not using the default configuration, just go ahead and make this block for yourself. It doesn't matter where in the file the block is, as long as you have the block available. Okay, now the first thing we want to do is work out what property we want to use to actually match the window we want to affect. So I'm going to go and make a new block in here. I will use the rule keyword, which I'll explain in just a moment, but we have to decide on whether we want to use something like the class, the name, instance, type, or role. And all of these values can be obtained by an application known as xprop. There are other things you can match on as well, but that's going to cover most of your use cases. So Xprop is an application that you probably won't have installed if you just installed Awesome WM, but it is a really useful application. Basically what it lets you do is find out the properties of any of the windows on your screen. So this was for my Alacrity window. As we can see, the name is set to Alacrity. Then for the class, it is set to Alacrity and also Alacrity. So this is a bit confusing, but the first value is the instance value and the second value is the class value. But let's go and run this again. And I'm going to go and select the, I guess the OBS window on my second screen. So this one has a bit more information. But really the only important one in here is the WM class, which is set to OBS and OBS. So once again, the instance and the class name is the exact same thing. Now, you might notice the WM name is actually missing for this one. So not every window is going to have every single one of the properties. So do keep this in mind when you are trying to match a window. Now, even though the instance name and the class name has been exactly the same for everything we've seen so far, it may not always be the case. So in the case of Firefox, the instance name is Navigator and the class name is Firefox. So make sure you check these values for whatever you want to match with because spaces and casing is very, very important. For this video though, I think we're just gonna use Alacrity. So as we can see, the class name here is set to just Alacrity. So I'm gonna use the class keyword to actually match on that. And we're gonna set this value here to be Alacrity. Now there is a later syntax we'll see where we will have brackets around this section here, but for just using the basic rule keyword, you won't need to do that. Now, one thing you might be noticing is it's starting to get a little bit cramped here. So as long as your bracket placement is in the correct location, it doesn't matter how much extra spacing you have, it is still going to work. So if we go and move this around like this, that is much easier to read. Right now, we're just matching on a single property, but let's say that we have multiple window types that all have the exact same class name, and we want to be certain about which one of those we're actually selecting. So we can actually go and test this out with Alacrity by using the dash dash class option, which lets you go and force a new class name. So let's go and run xprop on this, and as we can see, it has a completely different class name from what we set earlier. And we can address this by adding a second property to match on. So let's go and change the class name in here to be the new class name. So test one. And let's go and add a second property and make this one be name. So we're going to make this the same name as we had earlier. So Alacrity, because the name of the window hasn't actually changed. I'm going to go and add in a property in here just so we can make sure this is actually working. So properties equals, and we'll just make this floating because that's an easy one to set up. So floating equals true. And if I go and reset the window manager now, and I spawn a new Alacrity window, that one isn't floating. But if I go and spawn a window 
with the class name set to test1, as we can see, that one actually is. Now, this entire time we've been working with rule, but there's another option we can go with as well, and that is rule any. So with rule, every single one of the matches needs to be made at once, but with rule any, it only needs to match on one of the things you list out. Now, you may have spotted this block up here. Basically, what this means is the same thing as, say, a star in regex. So, match on everything. So, all of these properties in here will be applied to every single window that we spawn. So, if I go and say, remove this one and remove this one as well, and then we go and restart the window manager, as we can see, none of the windows that I spawn actually have window borders. For most use cases, you won't need to do this, but if you want to apply global properties, it is a nice option to have there. So let's swap this existing rule over to rule any. So firstly, we have to change the rule keyword in here to rule any, and then we also have to put these sections in here inside of brackets so we could actually list out multiple values. So let's go and put that in there and that in there. Also, make sure that if you do need to have multiple things in here, you do separate them with commas. So if we go and restart the window manager now, and I go and spawn an alacrity window, as we can see, that one is floating. And if we go and spawn one with test1 as the class name, that one will also be floating as well. Speaking of properties, I sort of brush past actually applying them. So regardless of whether you're using rule or rule any, this is going to be exactly the same. Make sure you place the properties block in the correct location. So if you place it inside of the rule block, it will be treated as if it's trying to be another thing to match on. So make sure you don't place it here. Make sure you place it directly after after where you define your rules. If you have bracket matching in your editor, this will make this much easier. And make sure you spell it as properties and not just property, otherwise it will not work. Now, like with matching on multiple class names in here, like we see below, if we want to apply multiple properties, we have to separate them with a comma. So let's say we make this window floating and also make it spawn on, say, a uh, tag seven for example now this is going to move all of our alacrity windows over to tag seven so if i go and restart this as we can see everything has been moved over to that tag but if i go and spawn something like my web browser that spawns where i tell it to spawn now i obviously don't have time to go through every single property you can use if you would like to find out all the properties i'll leave a link in the description down below to the documentation but you can do things like say setting the screen to spawn on setting whether you want the window to be minimized or hidden or full screen if you want it to be maximized if say when you spawn the window you want to also switch to the tag you actually spawned it on. You can change the location with the X and Y properties. You can change the width and height. You can have title bars enabled and plenty of other things as well. Now, up until this point, we've just been looking at rules, but there is also a counter side to them as well, and that is exceptions. So exceptions let you say what windows you don't want to match on. So let's say that we have this global property here, and we don't want to match on, say, alacrity windows for example so if i go and add the accept block make sure you can actually spell unlike me equals and then brackets make sure the comma is here as well because we have properties directly after it and let's say that we're going to match on class equals uh, alacrity so now if i have an alacrity window as we can see that one doesn't have any window borders along with the rest of the properties that are in here but if i go and spawn a PC Man FM window, we still have those borders. Now, as you may expect, there is also an accept any, and this also works exactly the same way as rule any as well. So accept underscore any, and then equals inside of brackets, we can say we want to accept class equals brackets and uh, alacrity. And then we can go and list out names and roles and all the other stuff we want to accept. And then all of this stuff will be skipped by this block. Now, awesome window rules also support callbacks. Basically, what these are are a way to run a function every single time a rule is matched. So let's say that we want to have a callback equals, and then we'll pass in function C. It doesn't matter what this C is called. This is just the name of the value being passed into the function. We're not going to be using the value for this function, though. So what we're going to run is awful spawn. That's to actually launch an application from inside of awesome. And we're going to just run MPC pause. And then we're going to end the function. So basically what this is going to do, 
is every single time we launch an alacrity window, it should pause our music. So I'm going to start playing it. And there we go. But there are plenty of other things you could do as well. One thing you could do is let's say that when you live stream with OBS, you want to have your current time and the song you're playing on the screen. So you're going to have to have those values in some sort of file. Well, what you could do is have those values be generated from a script. And every single time you open up OBS, you check if those scripts are running. And if they're not running, then you start them. And this can be done directly with the callback. Now, I've sort of mentioned most of the things that I'm using window rules for, but one of the other things that you're probably already using is this one right here to disable your title bars. So if I go and set this one to true, what it's going to do is above every single one of my windows, it's going to have this little bar here, and this is the default behavior of Awesome WM. Personally, I think it looks horrible. It is a waste of space, and I'd rather have them disabled. And a simple way to do that is with window rules. Do you know what's also simple? Setting up a server on a node. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on a node. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or even a personal VPN, there'll be one that fits you. I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size. Right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. I really do want to do more awesome WM videos. I just haven't gotten around to it. As you can probably tell from how my desktop currently looks. I haven't really delved super deep into modifying it. I kind of like the default configuration. It does most of what I want it to do besides the really weird binding where if you do super shift Q, it kills the window manager, not the window you're currently on. I don't know what they're thinking with that, but besides that, I haven't dug super deep and I want to start doing that. So expect some awesome videos over the next period of time. I won't give you a time frame for it because I'm probably going to forget. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Will, Brennan, Chica, Bento, Jimmy, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, the Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, start, leave, my pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute if you'd like to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. I realized halfway through recording this video that I basically messed everything up. So I had to go back and re-record all of that. So this video took twice as long to record. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and I'm out.